You had shortly moved to an adjacent room, and there were skeletons, half rotten, dancing between gold columns as blue lightning crackled across their bodies as if they were being shocked into a standing position, and you made your way back to the altar room. Gotcha. All right, let's go ahead and put Torrin's body on that table. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, yes. This is. Did you not see what I saw in that room? <laughs> It looked like somehow they were using the the souls of the weird dog creatures to fuel the whole thing. I mean, there is... Did you not see that? There is what the if, woman that is also barking. Yeah, and, and there's that. I mean, what is, what, in, is there any part of that sentence that you find not disturbing? What if, so we're, we assume that we're they're using those as kind of like a fuel? Hmm. Well, although I'm sure it would be very amusing to have Torn bark occasionally, you know, the entertainment of value of that would probably wear thin after a while. So that why don't we try it? Why don't we try the more traditional method? That, Bring him back. I don't think he'd get boring uh, if uh, if he could play fetch too. Well, there's also be the endless recriminations of why did you reincarnate me using an <laughs> evil dog soul? I just don't want to have that conversation forever. I agree. I was just in jest. It would be a funny conversation, though. They put him on, but if you if you have access to more what you say traditional methods, I am not familiar with let's, it. Let's put let's put the uh, the evil dog soul bed in our back pocket. Call that Plan B, mm-hmm. and uh, if nothing else pans out, maybe we can reconsider. As Caliban is making the statement, you look over to the corner where the lady is sitting on all fours scratching the back of her ear and licking her shoulder. Yeah, anyway, similar to how I was able to find Nesamantu with a tracking spell, I might be able to narrow a search for the necessary diamonds and cast a similar spell that Mm. could at least point us in the right direction. I mean, alternatively, I guess we could just search every room, but this would at least, uh, I mean, because Torin's not getting any fresher. That's true. That's true. Also, uh, Another bit of good news, I think I might be able to take to raise Zolt's purse. Hmm. I mean... But that also requires diamonds. Right. So... Oh, and, and, we have to cr- and we have to crush the diamonds up, so if you spot anything that looks like it could be used to crush diamonds, be sure to grab it. In the meanwhile, is our only choice right now to f- dragging him around with us? You know, oh, I don't want to... Ac- I don't want to accidentally break anything if something happens. How long do we have before he starts? I still have the scroll of gentle repose that I can... Uh, do you, do you okay? have everything you need to transcribe that scroll? You know, I never thought to look into that. I, I will do that as as we search for the diamonds. Because if we, think, if we can't find any diamonds, we may need that spell multiple times. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so the one use would be no use. Got it. Mm-hmm. Let me uh, check my pack. You find yourself in this room... A few dead zombies, the lady who has mannerisms of one of the dogmen, and this large stone table plated in gold. What happens now? Take a rest or... Yeah, should should we take the time for you to transcribe the spell into your book so that you can cast it later when needed and then we can can set a guard and and rest because that fight took a lot out of me. Yeah, that would be that would be wise. So you start planning. It's going to take four hours to transcribe the spell, but you have all the components you need. Short rest or long rest while Fiddle completes this task. I personally do not need a long rest, but uh, whatever you guys need. Yeah, I for some reason don't need one either. I was... So let's say for the ease of time, Fiddle's completed the copying of the spell. You've now taken a long rest as I've rolled for encounters and no encounters occurred. Nice. Amazing. Well, I can cast locate object. There's any diamonds within a thousand feet, not behind lead. It'll point us in the direction. Let's do it. That's this is important, right? We need it for for him. And then you said my curse, so this is really important. Right. You find a ping to the west of your current position. You just point, and Zolt's going to start going in that direction. He's going to cast pass without a trace on the party. Everyone now has a plus 10 to their stealth, and you can pick up the party token and move forward. 
So it looks like a 18, 29, 28, and a 34 stealth. Nice. So does that work the way it worked when you guys were tracking Nesamantu? Like when I come to this intersection, will Caliban be able to point which direction it is? Yes. And as you look back, Caliban is standing at the door and pointing back in the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah, I thought he said west. (laughs) The other west. Oh my, my bad. I should. I need to hold up my hands, right? Which one? Which one is the L? Here we go. Now this spell only lasts for ten minutes, so possible I might have to do it multiple times if it's a good distance. Wait, I'll consult with my god. <laughs> <laughs> Your god, Caliban. As you move closer to it, you get a ping, and it seems like it's still to the west. It is clear. I'm going to walk up after Fiddle moves out of the way and try the handle, see if it's locked. You try the handle, and it easily opens. Okay. I will open it stealthily. Do you want another stealth check? That's a 40. The rest of the party is waiting for Zolt to open the door, and he does so silently as he nearly disappears through it. The door is open, and a path leads to the west before it turns to the north gonna follow it as you come to the turn in the hallway you see a heap of dead creatures the pile includes several dire rats a handful of bats and three dogmen guards what does it look like they died from give me an investigation or perception check yeah use your eyes it'll 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 fiddle find cool i just point at the pile and i say fiddle do it 21 they appear to be coated in frost. There's frost. There could be a dry aging room up ahead. So you think what? they're saving the bodies? Mm, yes, yes. If you hang, if you hang meat for a while, especially in a nice temperature-controlled room, you could get meat to get more tender. This is their bodies. This must have been. In my investigation, do the dead bodies look like they're? Wearing like older clothes or the modern clothes or whatever you consider modern during our time. Um, like, do they look like from the past? Give me a history check. Twenty-six. The dogman guards look like they're wearing the standard uniform you've seen throughout the Fire Forge. You can't make out the uniforms that are on the dire rats. May, may I uh, make a recommendation, gentlemen? Mm. Remember that Plan B? Could we add to that Plan B? Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. Just wanted Wait. you're agreeing. Yes. Wait, Wait, you, yes. You, you want to resurrect one of the dog yeah. guys and ask yes. him what killed him? Yeah. Well, we don't have to ask him. I just want to see Ooh. what the table does. <laughs> and if you don't want to use Torin, we can use one of these bodies. Can we do that after? Absolutely. We, as long okay. as we could do it. Plan B. Thanks. I well, start looking they're through all, the dead they're bodies. They're all piled in this, turned down this corridor. I'm going to take my bow out and shoot an arrow into the pile of bodies. You shoot your arrow into the frozen bodies. Upon impact, some ice chips jump from them as part of their extremities crack and fall away. So they're okay. frozen solid. Interesting. I'm, I'm glad you, you shot at them first because I was, Fiddle was making his way over to the body to try to like look at which one he wants to use. That's and why I, he did, did it. it. <laughs> and how tall is the pile? Five, maybe six feet. Okay, so we could get over them and get to the other side if we wanted to. Caliban, is your ping pointing this way? West by northwest. Okay. Well, Caliban said he only has 10 minutes left. We should hurry up and get over this pile, but we should be wary of whatever... If it if it's a creature that did this, we shouldn't need to keep an eye out. Yeah. Agreed. I take, off my, take out a small knife and I mark one of the bodies. Are you afraid someone's going to come and take it? Okay. Um, no, I chose I chose the one that I wanted. Go ahead and make me a DC 16 dexterity saving throw. Mother. That's why you left. Why don't you guys stop me? <laughs> you said saving throw? Okay, there. Yeah, DC 16 deck. 15. Fiddle moves up towards the pile of bodies. He reaches out and you witness cold air and frost shooting from the small holes in the ceiling. You take six points of cold damage and you are restrained. What does the rest of the party want to do in this moment? Fiddle, don't move. Just move your eyes 
Oh, where's where's the trigger for the trap? Did it do anything? Let me look, and then I'll look around and see if I set something off. I just stepped here and marked it. Oh, it's cold. 18. You look around and certainly know the trap is coming from the ceiling, but you can't see that there is any kind of mechanism controlling it. I, um... Make me a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage due to being restrained, Fiddle. Eight is a failure, and you take another three points of cold damage as the jets quickly blow their freezing air upon Fiddle and the pile of bodies, coating them in a new layer of frost. I'm gonna reach up. I think this is how it happened. I'm gonna reach up, grab them, and pull them back. Zolt, give me a DC 16 dexterity saving throw. 27. 27. As you pull Fiddle's semi-frozen body away from the pile, the jets again blast downward. But with practiced grace, you're able to quickly move out of harm's way. Well, makes sense why they're all piled up like that if it happens every time you get near it. Um, the, uh, the trap, when obviously uh, we, we see the, the jets coming from the ceiling, how many jets are we talking about here? Every six inches to cover the ten-foot cube. Oh, so that's a lot of holes. Yeah. So this whole bl- area is blocked by that. Do the holes, are they just in this corner? Do they seem to continue down the hallway? You move up, taking care to not get too close to the pile. You scan the ceiling beyond and don't see any holes that continue beyond the pile of corpses. Well, we could always run through it, jump over it. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I got caught right when I stepped into it, and uh, I was, yeah, it caught me. Do we have any ladders or, or long poles or a staff? For, for what purpose? Well, if, if it's something on the ground, like if it's a weight thing, then we could put a, well, actually it was the test to see if it's a weight thing. Like if we just stand from a distance and then put the pole into the area and it goes off, then we know it's not the floor, right? Are, so are you saying we should have bought a 10 foot fall pole? <laughs> like the good old days. Oh, Jet- oh, wait, what kind of diamond do you need? I have a diamond worth 500 gold. Oh, not that much. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, I have a fishing tackle kit that has a wooden rod in it. Yeah, the fishing pole from when I was sailor. So I'm going to take that and then stand a good distance away so I'm not going to get hit by the jets and just put the pole like over the bodies and see when, where I put the pole, like if it engages. You place the pole over the pile of bodies and the trap does not trigger. Caliban. As you're watching Zolt perform this action, you see on one of the dogmen's left pinky fingers a glint of a platinum band. Look! Platinum material! On the dogman! Oh, that one was married. Should I try and knock it off of his hand with the pole? I don't know. If only someone had had some magical way to reach over there and grab it. I know, right? Mm. I uh, produce my mage hand and do the light bulb motion with my yeah. main hand. It, it bears the question, Fiddle, why you touch anything with your regular hands. I have no answer for you, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes the best experiences are felt and experienced on your own. <laughs> oh, okay. I, reach, I, I don't know, I'm sorry. I will reach over with my mage hand to um, grab the platinum man that, that uh, Calibon points out. Pull it over and I inspect it, but it's still in the mage hand. Here's here's what you pointed out, Caliban. I hold it up to Caliban's face. Yeah, uh, could we lose the finger? Uh, sure. And then I'll like crunch it so that the eyes kind of. There you go, Caliban. And I hold well, it wait, out. Well, wait, wait. you think I'm gonna be carrying the? You you. Why don't you carry that? Oh, okay. Does it have a gemstone on it? Does it have a diamond? Is no. that? I, Clean platinum band. Yeah, I'll activate my uh, my winged boots and just kind of like fly over the area. Like, be, be, be ready to grab me in case this is a really dumb idea. As you start to float over these bodies, I need you to make a DC 16 dexterity saving throw. Really dumb idea. Six is a failure, and you take nine points of cold damage, and you are restrained. 
I'm gonna uh, hook him with my wood pole and pull him back. Like try and try and around. try and hit him back towards us. If my bow is strung, could I could I like hook his arm or his <laughs> put it around his head and just pull him back? Give me a dexterity check to see how quickly you can do this. Straight dexterity check. 17. You extend your bow towards Caliban and lasso his toe. Pulling your bow back, you feel tension that could possibly break it. Uh, all right, I'll just reach out and grab him. Make me a dex save. 27 again. 27. You easily reach out and grasp Caliban, pulling him from beneath the freezing jets. Caliban, you take five points of cold damage. Zolt, you're able to evade injury once more. Next person that goes there, why don't we like put a rope around him? Good mm-hmm. call. Mm-hmm. Good call. Okay, not not a pressure plate. Yeah, not that, a pressure that's, plate. That's, that's clear. <laughs> so this this pile, you'd have to climb it first and then get over. There's no way to just like jump over it. You could probably jump over it with the boots on Torin's feet. You mean the boots on my feet? Aren't you a monk? Yes. Jump over there, and then we'll tie a rope to us, and if we get stuck, you just pull us over. We're teleporting, too. So if I... Oh, yeah, control them. Would I be able to jump from here to here? Yes. I guess I'll give it a shot. As you enter the 10-foot area, give me a DC 16 dexterity saving throw. We put a rope around him first. Oh, well, three times the jumping distance, so I could jump... 30... Nine feet. <laughs> okay. Deck save, you said? Damn, 27's popular tonight. Yeah, and you, you're easily able to jump over the pile just before the cold air descends upon you. But you're too quick and avoid injury. From, from on this side, do I see anything that would hint to be what caught, what um, triggers it? You can make me an investigation or perception check. Guy, as you look around, you see what looks like an eldritch symbol carved on the wall where you're standing. It's approximately six inches from the floor. I let I let the guys on the other side know that. So I ask them to maybe search the floor there, see if there's a, a rune there. Oh, there's a rune? It's probably powering the trap. Do you want me to just throw you a crowbar and you can destroy it? Oh, no, I'm wondering if there's a same rune on that side. Okay. Should I take a perception from this side? Because uh, Fiddle investigated it. I didn't find any... Um any uh pressure plates but i can see if there's any runes or any specific uh type of it's just probably powering the whole thing so you want me to um quote unquote erase it yes Mm -hmm. is it a carving or is it a um it looks like it's been carved into the stone itself and it's giving off a faint glow i've got a hammer or i've got a crowbar which one do you want i may have something give me one second okay if that doesn't work, I have to dispel. You'd need to see it, wouldn't you? Uh, 120 feet. Yeah, I that. need a crowbar. I throw the crowbar through the through the opening towards Sky. And unless somebody has any issues, I start whacking up the room. You spend a good minute trying to deface this rune, but your efforts don't appear to have any effect. Okay, plan B. Uh, fiddle, stand on my shoulders and uh, cast Dispel Magic on the rune if you can see he, it. Uh, he doesn't need to see it. Oh. Uh, be within 120 feet. There you go. Let me stand back real quick while you do this. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I don't use this spell often. Um, Here I go. Uh, wait a minute. So oh. before, before, before anything happens because I'm here, I want to look like wait a minute let me make sure there's room first i want to kind of like peer down that way you peer down the hall and it turns to the left about 100 feet from your position nothing in the hall catches your eye okay i'll i'll stay right right um there i guess and then all right go ahead fiddle ready and then i hold out my uh trident and i say espetergio Guy, as Fiddle casts his spell, you see the faint glow from the rune fade to black. It, I did it. The rune, the rune faded to black. I say, come through, guys. 
All right. Uh, Zoltz, because he's paranoid, holds his hand, uh, his hand up just real quick and then puts his hand over where it would, would engage the trap before because he knows he's got a pretty good deck save. Does it does it come on? Uh, no, it does not. Okay, well done. Well done. And then we climb over. May I investigate the bodies, guys, or should we go? I mean, it'll probably be easier once we get back when they've defrosted a bit. Oh. Otherwise, you're going to have to break through bodies to get to the other bodies. That's true. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, pocket the... Put away my, my mage hand and put pocket the, the ring. Does it do anything? Am talking? I still alive? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got him so paranoid, he's concerned about putting a ring in his pocket. Yeah. You put the ring on a Torin. <laughs> yeah, that's where you should probably do that. Oh, it's a ring of resurrection. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I accept my crowbar back, and then we continue to stealth forward. Yeah, I have to recast the spell, though, because I lost my concentration. Oh, so. bummer. Moving north along the hallway, it turns to the west. As you continue, there is a door on your right-hand side, and the hallway once again turns and continues south. I'm going to look at Ka- Caliban to see if it's to the west of here, if we should check this door or, or keep moving. Can I just keep pointing whatever direction I'm... The location is almost due west from here, just a tad to the south. Okay, it might be in this room. I'm going to point to the door and say, Fiddle. Mm, yes. Door. Fiddle. Yes. Whoops. <laughs> As you check for traps, you find very clearly written on the door... In an elegant common script are the words, keep out, very dangerous. It says keep out. That means go in, right? <laughs> right, guys? Probably. I'm going to ask him. I'm going to cure myself before we do that. Oh, yeah, good idea. <laughs> I'm going to cast shield. Yeah, shield is a reaction spell. It's not a... You mean yeah. mage armor? Mage armor? Would you try? And, would you mind trying the door with your mage hand? Oh, Just yeah. Just to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I wiggle the door. You wiggle the door handle, and it seems like it's unlocked. Seems unlocked, gentlemen. Okay. Then Zolt's going to uh, move up and try and peek through the door without being noticed. As you open up the door, you see an inky black cloud lying just beyond the door frame. It seems to roil in the hallway. You're not able to see anything beyond it. Inky black. Yeah, there's a cloud in here. Wow. Yeah. Should we try the other path? See if it leads at least in the direction we need to go before trying the inky black cloud. Which other path? There's a path to the south. It might circle back to the west. Yeah, can't hurt. I'm just going to keep moving past these doors unless Caliban points at one of them. Well, we got a problem here, folks. As you make your way into this larger room, you can hear moaning and screaming long before you enter. What happens now? I'm going to stealth forward and see what's up there. Okay. And yeah. In the room, there are eight creatures chained to the walls. Five may be dead or unconscious, but of the other three, you see a robed dogman, a dogman soldier, and a green scaled lizard folk. I look, uh, I make my way back to the party and say, um, there's a bunch of, uh, individuals chained up on the walls. There are two lizard men, one robed, one guardsman, and then a lizard person. And it looks like they're going from person to person. I don't know if they're the ones killing them or not, but it looks like a bad situation. Do we just want to take them out? So well, they're all uh, chained. Uh, what's the danger? Yeah, that's true. I'm gonna. There seems to be another room beyond. As you move up into the room, give me a perception check. Twenty-five. You hear a loud banging against a wooden door coming from somewhere to the north. And there's something banging up there. Someone, I don't know if it's a door, a table. I don't know what they're hitting against, but it's wood. Should we move past them and... I don't know. There must there must be is something there, up there. The banging is coming from the room? It's it's. There's another room to the north, and it's coming from up there. So I'm concerned if we make our way into the next room, the three chained people will notice us and give us away. So, well, that's the direction that I'm still sensing, right? From where you are right now, it's almost due west. Uh, there's not, no other not, path that goes yeah, that way. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, let's go. Let's go find out what's up there. We head into the room and I try and do the universal sign for shush to the people chained as we make our way to the north. Heading through this room and following the northern path, you peer into an adjacent room and see a hulking zombie, two smaller zombies, and a flaming skeleton. The hulking zombie is pounding on a sturdy wooden door set into the northern wall, apparently attempting to break it down. With each blow upon the door, the creature shrieks in rage. So focused on their task, they are completely oblivious of your party. The rest of the room is in disarray, as if a tornado crashed through some library. Large tomes, small ink pots, and pottery fragments are scattered throughout. Two smaller zombies, one big one, one flaming skull. Uh, looks like they've destroyed the room when they're trying to get through the door. Should we take them out? All right, let's uh, let's stack up and kill these guys. Uh, let's put Torin's body away from the combat area. <laughs> Have we already cast General Repose on him? Oh, not yet. Not yet. All right, you should do that with the with the scroll um because then it won't cost you a spell slot and then you can well, no, cast no, it again the tra- later. transcribing it tria transcribing it. yeah oh well, let's set him in the corner or whatever so no one walks away with his body and let's kill these zombies oh i still have the x on him no i'm gonna leave a, my signal whistle around his neck you call us if you need us Lauren. we'll be back i'm gonna cast raise undead <laughs> as a monk Do it. Right. yeah Richard we got good news and bad news <laughs> you're alive but you're not alive uh, I'm positioning and I'm just gonna shoot at some people as okay. soon as I can uh, can you can you mark where you saw them again um, Zolt you should be able to see them right now I'll let you see is a, a hallway no you're looking the wrong direction to, to the north <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna stand right. I'm gonna stand right here. <laughs> I'm like, I don't see because I was walking over here. Hey guys, I don't see anything. I don't see anything down the path we just walked. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you're right. I see them. I'll I'll be right. I'll be right here so I can at least. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there's only me, huh? I guess I'll stand here. I I had made good berries before. Um going to sleep because I had spell slots so um I, how many do I have I think I have 10 Ooh, yes I have 10 I'm gonna uh, put a good Mary in the mouth of the three that are still alive and then and then save the other ones for the unconscious ones after the fight just to sustain them give them a health point back but has it been more more than 24 hours since you've gotten those good berries no because oh. we we got a long rest and then he transcribed the spell and we did another long rest. I had a level one spell slot before we took the long rest. So they, I, I cast it before we took the long rest. All right, Should guys. we roll initiative? Yep. <laughs> oh, wait. Make sure you have yourself selected. Damn. He matches with the skeleton. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, he's gigantic. I just saw him. Did he come out the door or is that the thing that's been banging on the door? Yeah, man, that's been there the whole time. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, okay. You're, you're funny, man. No, I'm sorry. I was just not paying attention. It's because uh, my my uh, part was scrolled down and I scrolled up. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's a, it's okay. It's not like we're on a huge map anyway. So I totally, <laughs> it, it's, it's to be expected. That's the flaming one, right? Is the big one the flaming one? No, the skeleton one is the flaming one. So the one in the back? Yeah, okay. So, um, Zolt's gonna bonus action hide. That's a 25. And then he's gonna take three attacks on the flaming skeleton, because he's seeing the, the the room kind of on fire, and he's like, okay, that might be the second biggest threat after the giant dude, so he's gonna try and take out the flaming skeleton first. 24 for nine piercing and five sneak attack. Firing off your arrow. It hits and obliterates the flaming skeleton. Hell yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to attack one of the smaller skeleton dudes. Now, would they be aware of me? You break your stealth by making an attack. 31 for 9 damage. 
15 for... Does 15 hit? 15 hits. For 12 damage. Because I get that extra D8 on the last one. 15's good. Oh, man. Zombies again. Remember zombies, guys? Oh! You hit this creature several times with your strikes. It turns and glares at you, refusing to fall dead. Salt moves up here to break line of sight with them. And that is his turn. Where's the done button up there? I'll just, um, I'll go back here and I'll uh, hold my action for when somebody, you know, gets up here to, to, to get to my, my room, my range. Okay. And you shot this one, right? Salt? No, I, I shot this, the bottom left zombie. So I shot the flaming guy and then the bottom left zombie. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to um, cast Firebolt. I want to test this out. Over at the... Um, right in front of the big guy. The same target that Zolt. Actually, let me let me get in front of him. And then I'm, I'll uh, cast it. 15 hits for 10 fire damage. And he crumbles to the ground. Yay! Nice. nice. Fire seems to work, guys. I'm going to move out of Caliban's way. How silly does this look to the enemy? Just we hit him and then and then duck around the corner. Yeah. Like, oh shit, they saw us run. <laughs> Seeing two of its companions drop, the shambling corpse moves in your direction. Uh, seeing this guy, I suppose I will also firebolt. A 19 hits for six fire damage. And then I will bravely uh, run away. Move away. All right. Run away. Oh, oh crap. Away. <laughs> it looked past Caliban. I was like, uh, should I run that far? I, I, I don't have to be the farthest away. I just have to be farther away than you are. <laughs> um, as the ogre zombie continues banging on the door, part of the frame gives way. Bonus action hide. 26. And then I'm going to come around the corner and shoot the first thing I see. That is not a homie. Oh, it's that zombie right there. Yeah, fire arrows. 31 for 18 points of damage. This creature also drops to the ground. Dope, 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 dope. I'm going to look at Guy and say, should I hit the big one or wait? Uh, I can't see him there right now. Oh, there's, I'm just saying, should I hit the big one to bring him over or should I wait? Oh, like, uh, oh there's, uh, only, there's only one guy left? Yeah, the big dude. I um, think so. He's trying to get into that door. Dirty 20 why don't, for 10. Why don't, why don't we let him break down the door for us first? Too late, I already hit him with an arrow. 10 points of damage. And then I go back around the corner. Okay, I hit him, he's coming. That's my turn. Let me hit the button. I forgot about the buttons. All right, I go around the corner because I need to see what's going on. That zombie out in the open, I killed that one, right? Yep. So there's yeah. only the big guy left, right? Only the big guy left. So I'll just go over there and do my deal. Do your deal. First attack. Ooh, 17 to hit. 17 hits. For 9 piercing. Second attack. For 29 hit for 11 piercing. And then um, bonus action, I'll just do an arm strike. Seven. So 27 damage. And then 5, 45. And just for good measure, I'll move there. That ends my turn. Um, mini at 5, 10, 5, 10. I'm going to uh, shoot it with fire, firebolt. Firebolt. Yeah. Fizzle. And I'm going to head back here. End my turn. Back one, two, three, four, five. And I will also firebolt him. Yeah. And I'll uh, stay there. As it moves towards you, it reaches down to the left and picks up a large morning star with spikes protruding from its head, swinging it as it comes into range and rolls an eight that misses. Yes. So it's going to bonus to action hide, 25. He's going to come around the corner to shoot and see Caliban in front of him and shake his head <laughs> and then move up to there and take a shot. 25 for 20 damage, 19 for eight damage. All righty, I will do my deal. First attack, 19 for a crappy roll of 7. And then second attack, 
that will hit, and the large ogre zombie drops to the ground. It doors south, so yeah, that's a good point. And then I point at Fiddle and I go, door, Fiddle. You sure you want me to do that? Do what happened last time? We'll do it with your... Oh, just... he finally he finally gets it. I finally get it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will check it. I, I will check it. Okay, okay. Check investigate, it. investigate. It's clear, and it didn't suck me in. Well, are I supposed to check if it's unlocked too? And I'm going to pull on the door. It's not moving. I think we need uh, to do something to make it open. Anybody know how to do that? Hello, door. Nice to meet you. Will you open, please? Is it locked? No, it won't budge. It won't budge. But it's not locked. Oh, okay. I think I forgot how doors work. I just have been focused on investigating for traps. But it's good. Have you tried pushing? Uh, no. Okay, let me try that. You push and the door opens. No! Oh, I got it. I think these glasses are making me dumber, guys. Yeah, it's the glasses. And, and, oh, shit. And before you move in, let me describe the room you see. The chamber is thick with the smell of chemicals and rotting flesh. A figure slumps against the lip of a 10-foot diameter pool to the south. Dim light emanates from this pool and its twin to the north, near which stand a table and shelves strewn with books, vials, and alchemical equipment. Swirling purple mist fills an archway leading to the west. For a brief, brief moment, it thins and you glimpse another room beyond. From the same direction, you hear the chanting of a lone voice. As you look about, a rot grub falls from the table, scurries along the ground toward the west. What happens now? Well, I suppose we should go in. Where's where's the diamond, Caliban? To the west. Fiddle? Uh, I will check. The, I know what to do. And I head over to the books. Actually, That's... it might be nice to know if there's any magic going on in here. I mid walk yeah. and you stop me and I go that is right um well you're actually not, in the hall but not not like in the look of the mist oh sorry this way yeah he's wandering off down the hallway <laughs> he's on, like sorry. fine I'll check the door we're like no fitty get in here please books and then I stop right here and then you want me to check the purple mist you said well just just in general in general check, yeah detect magic probably Okay, because you asked me. I'm going to sit right here and cast the ritual. I'll detect magic. It'll take me about 10 minutes. Caliban, as Fiddle starts casting his ritual, you hear the chanting in the western area beyond the mist go quiet. I'm going to grab Fiddy by the collar and say, just keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to drag him away from the doorway so if someone looks through it, they won't see him. You hear the voice to the west yell something aloud in a language none in the party can comprehend. As the echo of the voice falls away, items on the table near you start rustling and the books start moving. As soon as I see the books move, I kick Fiddy and they say, "Ah, oh, we're fighting. I told you I should have checked the books. Y'all don't listen to me. Oh wait, click myself. Damn, I, load, I rolled low. As the books move among the detritus on the table, you see hands the size of halfling hands Crawl up from below the refuse. Guy, what happens now? I guess I'll go up there, and I'll go stabby stabby. First attack, 26 to hit, or 12. All right, then I have second attack, 17 to hit. As the hand, very similar to your own hands, crawls across the tabletop, you skewer it on the end of your blade. You high-fived it too hard. And then... I'll, I guess I'll do 10 feet, hop on the table, and then I'll attack this one with my bonus action. A march strike, 26. <laughs> you stamp down from atop the table, squishing it from the western room beyond the purple mist. You hear the continued chanting. Caliban, roll me a 1d2. Zolt, give me a DC 18 wisdom saving throw. 22. You hear the monotone voice pierce the mist and feel it trying to take hold of your body. But remembering all you've been through with Nessamantu, you're able to shrug off the effect. 
the Crawling Claw's turn. This one moves next to Fiddle and makes an attack, rolling an eight. Oh, no. Claw does not hit. That does. Or For three slashing three. damage. Ow. Ow, these hands. What? So they're, they're the size of halfling hands, you said? Halfling hands, or perhaps no man's. 18 to hit. Uh, yes. Two slashing damage. Are they like uh, dead looking hands? Like exactly like the picture? Yes. A six misses. Oh, uh, guys. Zolt, one will attack you with advantage. That's a 23 for a crit. Oh, yep. For nine slashing. Wow. One will move up to Caliban and take an attack. That's a 16. Uh, no, that missed. And Guy Lagasse. Natural one. So as you move into the room, these claws crawl out from under the desk. You see Guy stomp, crushing two of them, but others crawl from the bookshelf where Fiddle is wide-eyed at all the ancient tomes, clamping onto his leg, sinking their filthy claws into his skin. I'd like to take a reaction. That's it, thank you. What did you roll for initiative? A four? Oh yeah, there's some weird shit going on with me, huh? That is the end of their turn, and now it is your turn, Zolt. Interesting. I will take three attacks on hands. I'm going to focus on the ones by fiddle at first. Okay, everybody. We need to be hands on here. Yep. <laughs> Wait for that one. Man, I take five psychic damage. <laughs> it's, it's been less. It's been less than a, an hour. So I'm going to use bonus action hunter's mark on the one to the south of fiddle. And I'm going to take my attacks. 24 for 15 plus... It looks like you don't need a hand, Zolt. Zolt just aims, takes another bow out of his quiver and aims at the next one. To the east of Fiddle. 19 for 13. Are you saying this psychically or telepathically, guy? (laughs) The last one is going to be the one that was still on the bookcase that attacked him. 27 for 8 plus... For 12 points of damage. That claw is pinned, unmoving to the table. Good. Good job, Zolt. You're, uh, uh, you handled it. Uh, Zolt turns around and walks out of the room. <laughs> I was going to say, you're a stand up guy. <laughs> and he just, he just leaves. He, leaves. He, knows, he knows it's a combat, but he's like, fuck all of these guys. These guys are ridiculous. At, At the, the end of your, your turn. turn Oh no! I need a DC 17 wisdom saving throw from Caliban. Oh no! You feel a gash fall across your body, confusing you momentarily, but you're able to shrug it off, unsure of what it may have been, unsure of what it might have been. Fiddle, it is your turn. I am going to, let's see, they don't seem to hurt too bad, so I'm going to try and shake the hand of the one right here. Shocking grass. Oh, yeah, that's what you're trying to use on us, Rick? Holy crap. Stop it. It's better that I just think these are little <laughs> halfling hands. Zapping the claw, you electrocute it, and it falls, writhing in agony. Pleasure to meet you, little hand. I'm going to... I have something real quick. Do I have a way to escape without... If I cast it a spell, I can't do another spell as a bonus action, right? Like, I can't misty step at this point, right? I believe that's the... Or I can, because that was a cantrip, right? I'm going to Misty Step... Step, sorry. Misty Step. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And I will end my turn. Done. I will go Primal on the one right in front of me. Slashing through it with your beast-like talons falls to the ground, twitching momentarily. And then... Um, boom, boom, boom. The pose, I will move... <laughs> Back with 51, 2, 3, 4. And that ends my turn. So I'll attack the one in front of me. With your halfling hands, you smash the claw against the tabletop. And then I'll run across, attack that one. Ooh. Does a 12 hit? A 12 will hit for 12 damage, and you drop this one as well. Yep. Oh, you know what? I am. I am. Welcome. If you want to make an unarmed strike, there is still one next to you. Okay, I'll, I'll just go ahead and make a one-arm uh, one attack. attack, an unarm attack. Blind unarm attack. Fighter. I mean, oh. at, this, at this point, I'm surprised you're just not using Torrin's body as an improvised weapon. 
you hit and crush the claw into the tiled ground. Mush. How? Wait, I was, sorry, I didn't remember my movement. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, okay. How tall are these bookcases? 10 foot tall. Okay, cool. So I'd like to climb up and get on the top and kind of like, is, is there a room, uh, is there room, like more ceiling above that? Yes. The ceiling is about 20 feet tall. As you look around at the bookshelves and the walls, this area of the dungeon isn't as worn or dilapidated. Additionally, there aren't any runes or hieroglyphics that you previously found throughout the rest of the Fireforge. Would I think like looking at you saying that, would I think like this could have been newly built? Not newly built because the structure of the chamber matches other areas of the dungeon, but it is devoid of hieroglyphics and has somehow been preserved through the ages. Okay. Uh, regardless, I want to go with the, uh, on the on top of the bookshelf, kind of plant myself against the wall, like hiding in that. And that would end my turn. I need, I need Fiddle, Fiddle to give me a DC 17 wisdom saving 17 throw. Wi oh! Is this a magical I... saving throw because I have advantage? Yes, it is. All right. Wisdom. I call upon the wisdom of the owl. You, you feel, feel a force a come force. over you as you scowl at Caliban and shake your gray-white hair, feeling the effect wash over you, but it does not take hold. Now give me a con save. Okay. Is it a spell or spell-like thing? Yeah, it's a do spell. It? it is. Okay, well, because that last thing that hit me was magic, so obviously there's m I've got magic going on over now. I'm going to... Can I try a counter spell? Do you have to see the target? Mm, therefore, I will... Sp Roll my count, my constitution, uh, 21. You take 23 points of necrotic damage as you feel the moisture being sucked from your body. Your eyeballs sink into your skull and bags form underneath them. Holy moly. The crawling claws are all dead. Let's give them a hand while they were there. <laughs> Zolt was going to come in the room and then he heard uh, a guy make that joke, joke and now he's not going to, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Guys, something is hurting, and I don't think it's the hands. You're being mean to Fid. Bonus action dash, and then I'm going to look at Guy. I'm standing on top of the table. I look at Guy and say, it's through this door. Do you know what this mist is? And I look back at Fiddy and, and Caliban and say, you think you guys can dispel it? I can try. Okay. Is it so magical? I mean, I don't know. It's purple mist, bud. I thought you were the wizard. I don't study purple mist. Zolt readies an attack if something comes within range, but otherwise he is standing on top of the tables. That was uh, movement, bonus action to get onto the table, and then ready in action. At the end of your turn, you see skeletal hands grasp the edge of the blue-watered well in the south of the room, pulling the body up and out of it. You can take your opportunity attack. 24 for 10. These beings crawl forward from the well and approach, drawing their short swords and swinging at Zalt for eight piercing and 17 piercing. Uh, 17 also hits. I would like to take a reaction. Thank you. At the end of the well creature's turn, I need Zalt to make a DC 17 wisdom saving throw. Natural one. As you feel this compelling force wash over you, like looking at these intruders into a best friend, into one of your tribe mates, theirs, guys have grown up, to you. You're, mm. not, you're not sure, you feel this compelling force wash over you, seeing these intruders invade your tribe mates lair, you're unsure of who these humanoids might be, and why they're attacking your brethren. So I'm going to attempt to... See if the spell magic will work on this purple mist at third level. As you cast your spell, the purple mist dissipates. Behind the mist is a figure standing about six foot six inches tall, dressed in dark robes. He has pale skin and slicked back hair with a cloak pulled up about his shoulders. He looks your way after you dispel the mist and says, Huh, huh, uh, well played, fiddle. You see polished teeth with elongated canines. Know my name. 
bonus section movement uh five i'm gonna uh five ten fifteen twenty twenty five ten fifteen i'm gonna go over here five ten fifteen twenty five oh 25 not 30. i'm gonna go right over here and done at the end of fiddle's turn caliban you see the figure move to the north so can i tell that something has happened to zolt i mean i just look like i'm gonna uh, hug some skeletons caliban i don't know what's weird <laughs> give me an insight check with disadvantage yeah. damn son as you look at Zolt with his back against the wall, looking toward where the purple mist had just dissipated, and then back towards you, he slowly lifts his bow in your direction with ill intent. Oh, do you want to know what's a cool callback from when you guys first met me? One of the things that Zolt does because he's a bird is when he focuses on something, his body moves, but his head stays level. Like, you know, when real birds, when they're focusing, like, uh, like hawks and eagles. And the thing you notice, Caliban, is even though I'm breathing... My head has stopped moving, and my eyes are focused on you the same way when I'm uh, hunting. Okay. And I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five, six. And I will reach out <coughs> and touch Zolt and cast Greater Restoration. Whoa. That's a great spell. Actually, that's the thing that would li lift his curse. I need a, a hundred gold of crushed diamond for that. Uh-huh. Oh, specifically crushed diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> Very okay. Good. Rewind. S screw that then. Instead of that, uh, I will wild shape into a giant eagle. Um, this gives us the opportunity to throw that platinum ring into the fires of Mount Doom. Yeah. Huh. Man, if I was still controlling Zold, I would leave the dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also large now, but I can fly 80 feet. So uh, let's, let me see where 80 feet takes me. So that's like, uh, uh, I've got to select myself. So that's like 45. And now that I can see this guy, I have just enough movement left to fly up to him. And I will attack him twice. <laughs> my beak and my talons. They both miss. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Ooh, ouch. Yikes. Rolled a, rolled a 23 and a 24, and then a 7 and an 8. Yikes. Hey, it's the first time I've ever been a bird. That's true. You're <laughs> learning. Very hard to be a bird. Um, yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm, like, I think my arms are just as long as they used to be. So I'm getting used to the reach now. Are you an eagle with winged boots, though? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, wow. I, I'm an eagle. Eagle, eagle. Oh, so the, the clothes and everything just, you yeah. turn, the whole thing yeah. turns. Oh, got it. Is this mist active? Yes. And w w I saw um, Caliban able to move past this one? Not past the far mist, but past the close mist. Well, okay, yeah. so if that's the case, then I run in because that means I don't know where Caliban went. Ah, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. I guess I'll have to, yeah, I guess a bonus action dash. Mm -hmm. I mean, a bonus action one key point to step of the wind, so I can just run straight. You have advantage due to flanking. Forgot how to do an advantage on, there you go. Hey, attack. Randy. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's I just want to say, I just want to say, cause I've noticed mm -hmm. it. Your, your mini looks fantastic. Well, yeah, I spent a bunch of time screwing with him. Oh, and, 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 and I, I paid their, whatever their fee to get the photo booth thing. In the yes. background. That's right. You can color now. Cause I took color the other one. First attack hits second attack. And then, um, with that, you'll hear a guy say stunning strike. So constitution saving throw. Nice. 11. That fail. He will spend a legendary resistance to succeed. That's one. What is it? Who is he? He knew my name. Um, second attack, 23 to hit, and then you hear a guy again say, stunning strike. 22. Oh, uh, and that ends my turn, because I bonus action already. At the end of your turn, he moves and steps into this black fluid and disappears. Easier. It looks more like a teleport than anything else. Do I still have movement? Oh, wait, no, it was his turn. Bye-bye. Go ahead. 
I need Fiddle to give me a constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw. There we go. Con save. That's a failure. Oh no! That is a failure. Gonna dehydrate me again. You take 49 points of necrotic damage. I'm out. Oh! Holy moly. The skeletons are going to shoot at you, Zolt. And since allies of the caster have attacked you, the charm condition ends. Wow. I know you didn't want to do that, but that's true to what the skeletons would do. So you get a point of inspiration. Appreciate it. I'm down to 43. <laughs> I kind of do a little barrel roll with my head, as birds do. Look at the two people short bows and then turn to the north and see Fiddle. And my bird eyes go wide. I move over to him. And I cast Cure Wounds at a second level. You get seven points of healing back, Fiddle. You're awake. <laughs> I was going to say, what's Parone? What happens, all? Oh? Um, happens? I need to make some con saves, actually. Okay, so I I failed. So Hunter's Mark is gone on that last one. Because mm. I've been attacked three times. So Hunter's Mark is gone. Um, Fiddle is alive. He goes next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look down at him. Look down at him and say, uh, you need to get out of this room. Go through the doorway you just opened up. And then uh, Zolt is going to bonus action dash and do the same thing he just told Fiddle to do. He gets up here and he sees a giant bird and goes, huh? And then don't, sees... Don't come this way. Sees guy. Hey, yo, don't block me in, please. Oh, then he had he had enough movement to get to that space. He's in there now and points back to the hallway. Uh, fiddles up. Hopefully he'll come with me. And that is Zolt's turn. At the end of your turn, Zolt, you see the mist reform in the passageway. If I have 25, I do I round down or round up when I stand up? Down. Okay, so I'm going to stand up. So I'm no longer prone. 10 left. 5. 10. The, the the fog wall is there. Okay, then I'm going to Misty step then. Ooh. Misty that step. Misty that step. Yeah, can you see through the fog? You need to see with Misty step. Can I see through? Is it too dense? You cannot see through it. Okay, that case, let's see. I think I could do something here. Da, 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 da. It seemed to work the last time, so... I wait no I can't if I dispel it I'm stuck. Uh, um, ba, 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 ba. But yeah. we'd be able to get out. What do you mean if you dispel it or you're stuck? I can't. I have no nothing left to do. He doesn't have any more movement. He'll just be standing there. But it'll allow your friends to come into the come room and through. help you. That's true. Where, where is the guy now? In the room uh, with, he's with south him. Of me. Yeah, south of me. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. I'm going to... I mean... No, no, go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna... Dispel it. Yeah, I'm gonna dispel it. The mist once again dissipates. <laughs> uh, that is my movement. I use my action. Do I have any bonus? No bonus. Yep. I'm done. Choo! Fiddle. At the end of your turn, this vampiric beast moves right next to you. Uh, I will. My face. Oh, you're gigantic. He's a flying eagle. Hey, Oliver, come on, bud. You need to pay attention to the game. Oh, I know he is. <sighs> I'm not... uh, thing is, I can't really. You're kind of. I don't know. <laughs> you can fly over. Yeah, yeah. The the ceiling's like ten. Uh, oh, 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 okay. Yeah, you can fly over me. And I will fly over, and this time, I will just attempt to grapple the guy. Ooh. Grapple. Grapple. It'll use acrobatics. That's a natural one. Nice. It's grappled. And I streak right in his face. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get two attacks, right? You could attack with the other claw or, or do a beak attack. Don't you get two? Don't you get multi-attack? I do get multi-attack. I didn't think I'd get yeah. a second attack if I grappled. Yeah, like if the first one didn't work, you could have used your second attack to try again. Can he okay. use his second attack to uh, shove prone? Mm -hmm. Sure, why not? 
Do you have any movement left? Do you want to bring him back in here with us? <laughs> I actually do have some movement left. Let me see. That was like 35. It's hard to tell when you're huge. Uh, I know I got that problem every 50, day. <laughs> yeah, 60. Uh, I, I, I can't really drag him all the way back in there. I can basically drag him maybe to where the purple mist is. Let's do that. Do that. So if it comes up, it hurts him too. Somehow I doubt that it hurts him, but sure, I can try to drag him. It'll also get him closer, closer so Guy doesn't... Oh, oh wait, wait a second. That's so... So that's half. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'd only be able to. Yeah. I basically wouldn't be able to drag him anywhere. Not really. Okay. Okay. But I can try to shove him. Yeah. So there's something. Oh, oh there it is. Much one better. Okay. Oh, he has his fist in the air. It's like Ooh. high power strength. <laughs> Just want to shove him prone. Yeah. Down. So now basically you now have him pinned. That's amazing. A giant eagle screaming in his face. He's going to attempt to bite you at disadvantage. Oh shit. As you knock him down, he attempts to reach out with his fangs and bite your chicken leg. And he rolls a 12. Uh, wait, I gotta go check, see what the eagle. Uh, eagle fortunately has an armor class of 13. I'll take the chance <laughs> and jump in. <laughs> Man, you definitely had enough movement to get to him, but I love your bravery. Well, I didn't know that because I don't know, because I don't see there. You jump in and you can emerge from a red well. So you show up to the south. You lose one hit die and your maximum health is reduced by eight. Let's see the best way for me is for now. Zolt sees you pop out and goes, he's in, he's in the room we were just in. Hold on, I'm doing math. So, so looks at straight at the camera and says, why is he doing math? <laughs> Wait, but now I have to do one, two, oops, that work? Yeah, all right. Sorry, it's because of the hit point thing. All right, then I will uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, oh, 30, 35, 40. Oh, definitely I could reach there. And I will attack. Um, first attack. 25 to hit for 11 damage was on me and then here you say again stunning strike con save that's a 23 god damn it all right second attack a 29 hits say again stunning strike that i believe fails give me a second yeah that fails he'll burn another legendary resistance all right, and then, uh, you know what? I will do flurry of blows. Flurry of blows. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, first unarm strike, 25 to hit. 25 Who's that advantage? Oh, so let me fish for the crit. <laughs> you are, I uh, know, <laughs> doing that. Uh, All right. And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> you, you say static strike. <laughs> 17. Uh, makes it. Damn. Yeah, and one, a one, second, one. Um, I'm like burning through my control call here. Uh, <laughs> second, um, on our strike. Key, key. 23. And guess what I say? This is amazing. 14. Fails. Fails. He will burn his last legendary resistance. Nice. Burns. That's good. <laughs> and that is my turn. Amazing. Nice. Yeah, I use all my key points to burn uh, burn that. But... Was there was there anybody I'm gonna ask them while this is all happening. Was there anything else in the other room? There's I... portals. You hear portals. Oh okay. portals and another gate. Got There's it. another another mist in there, so we didn't see what's ahead. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Time to die. <laughs> oh no, he's singing ABBA again. This is the... I know. <laughs> Take I'm a chance. There's this ning. So, what um, does the hand, the fist mean again? Grappled. Grappled, okay. And prone. He he has a speed of zero. He can't get up. He's grappled. As you have him grappled to the ground, the bruises and cuts disappear from his body. Ooh. He's going to try and bite Fiddle at disadvantage. Oh, man. 
That's a 24. Wow. Fiddle's dead. 24 to hit? See, that that would have been a reason to move him. Randy, <laughs> move him away from Fiddle. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Just a reminder, Oliver, you could have shielded some of those attacks you took earlier when you were getting murdered. Yeah, I still would have died. Yep. <laughs> I took like 40 something on that one. I know, Ooh. that was so wild. It's, it fiddles down again, right? I can't so, see from over here. Yeah, um, I am, I'm down. You're, I think you're dead. Because maximum. 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 Yeah, maximum. Oh. Okay. Oh, you scared me for a minute there. Say, oh, say that again, maximum hit points to zero. You take nine necrotic and your maximum hit points are reduced by nine. Got it. But you don't die. The maximum goes below zero. Got it. Max HP modifier down by nine. Got it. That's so weird. Vampires, motherfucker. Is this what, what Strahd's gonna be like? This thing might be like a little bit out of our league. Um, at the end of your turn, it's going to the skeletons will move out and take an attack at Caliban. 21 to hit for eight piercing. And that hits. And a 15. Yes, that hit. Three piercing damage. There's eight and three is 11, okay. At the end of the turn, Diane is going to take a legendary action to try to bite Fiddle at disadvantage. That's a 19 to hit, and you take two death save failures. Oh! One, two, failures, failures. So it comes around the corner and is like, why is the vampire near Fiddle? <laughs> he likes me. Oh, I'm dead, sorry. And uh, cast Cure Wounds at first level. It's like, wow, this is, this is what I'm going to be doing the rest of the combat, huh? You get, man, I got way more than the first one. Uh, 11 points of healing. Fiddle, and you're awake. Uh, bonus action. Well, I'm going to move back. They'll probably get an attack of opportunity from grappled guy. Can he take attacks of opportunity while grappled? Probably, right? Yeah, he can take reactions. Yep. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to stay there. Man, I just want to pick up my token. Thank God. Okay. And, um, <laughs> this is so stupid. He's going to crouch down below that table and take the hide action so to the the archers won't have sight of him anymore. 19. And that's his turn. Thank you. Cuz he's he's biting fools left and right. So many people to bite. So many choices. <laughs> it's a smorgasbord for him. <laughs> he's surrounded by meals. He's going to form a fist and try to punch you. Don't uh, punch me, Diane. Diane spits hot fire. Let's do it. That's a hit for seven. He's not going to deal damage, but grapple you instead. Oh, we're going to have a grapple chain here. Beautiful. <laughs> but, but it is happening. <laughs> it's so silly. I love it. I'm alive again. If I uh, missy step, I just missy step prone, right? You would show up laying down somewhere else. Yep. At the start of your turn, the mist reforms in the hallway. Mother! Okay, so um, I'm going to misty step. Uh, 10, 25, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then uh, just again, because I want to follow the order this time. If I, I want to do a cantrip after my misty step, I cannot. It has to be a touch type. No. There's oh, it just has to be a cantrip. Just has to be a cantrip. Got it. Five, yeah, where, where are you going? 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Will this give me cover? Some type of cover? You can, uh, you can stand up. You still have your movement, bud. Oh, uh, I want to stay down. All right. For right now. Well, will this give me disadvantage if I try to shoot prone? Because he's prone too, so... Well, just think about his condition is prone. So if you attack him with a range spell, you get disadvantage. Yeah. Oh, because I'm prone. No, no because he's, he's prone. Your target is prone. Oh, but but I'm short to the ground. Like, I'm imagining, Doesn't, like, under, mm, like, a little kid any, and able pointing at, pointing any, at him. <laughs> any range attack to a prone target 
is is disadvantage. Doesn't matter what size you are or where you are in the world. Melee attacks, uh, I think, get an advantage. Oh, because they're on the ground. Yeah. May okay. I suggest you shoot the archers who are also doing damage to your giant eagle friend? You may, but I'm not thinking about that. <laughs> I'm thinking about the Dracula. <laughs> well, Zoltz got a hand around his throat, and he's yelling that at you, Fiddy. Yes, I'm going to firebolt Dracula. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At disadvantage. 16? A uh, 16 will hit. Yes! Wow. Wow, man. <laughs> I don't think Firebolt makes things burn, man. It just does the fire damage. Oh, really? That would be cool, though, if it sets stuff on fire. It does and in Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is not... They changed Great. so much stuff from now D&D. In now, instead of the Matt Mercer effect, it's going to be called the Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate effect. effect. It yeah, is. Exactly. They're changing so much things. Whew. Okay, then I'm going to yeah, I'll stay on the ground and um, I'm gonna uh, that ends my turn. See, that is smart because if the archers target you, they can't. Uh, there'll be a disadvantage. Diane will make a strike at disadvantage against Caliban. Caliban, how much hit points do you have? Hopefully, you're. Doesn't, strong. Doesn't matter. I'm I'm wild shaped, so it doesn't matter. Oh, it just absorbs it. That's right. That's a 17 to hit. That will hit. You take six bludgeoning damage. Give me a second here. This is so ridiculous what is happening in this room right now. <laughs> We're all holding hands. Uh, just out of curiosity, can the giant eagle fit through the doorway that leads out of this room? Yes, but you'd have to squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> That would be truly truly ridiculous. (laughs) Chain of people being drugged down the hallway. (laughs) Just, just, yeah, but we're also in a labyrinth. We don't know what door, like behind every door could be a room of enemies. So I I don't know. Where was that floating room at? (laughs) It's down the hallway to the north. Didn't you say that there's good rooms in here? (laughs) Not that we found. I don't know yeah, any good rooms except for the have. the river. But we also need these diamonds. We do. We do. Yes. You're right. Yep. Uh, okay. Let's see. Bonus action. Um, I will drop the wild shape. Okay. Cool. Of running, running away. I will cast. Uh, let's see. What spell level is that? Okay, third level, I will cast Conjure Animals, Conjuring One Large Constrictor Snake. That is a beast, Giant Constrictor Snake. Wait a second, nah, that's not gonna work, he's huge. He won't fit in the room. He'll fit, just to the north of us. Really? Because I thought uh, I thought huge was like 16 by 16 or something like that. No, that's... Or no, it's three, yeah, it's, it's three, by three. three by three. Oh, well, if it's three by three, Forget the snake. I will instead uh, conjure my friend enormous tentacle. <laughs> oh oh, we haven't God. seen him in a while. Do we, do we need? Do we need to take off? Take it off the stream, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel suddenly uncomfortable that I'm only wearing boxers right now. <laughs> Tie break. And uh, so that's uh, that's my action. I don't know where he, where we're gonna put him in the uh, initiative order. It'll just go on your turn if that's all right. Okay, well, that's totally fine with me. Well, then uh, make his uh, his constrict attack. I really, really hope. Uh, I'm pretty sure that happens. It's also at advantage because he's prone. He might not be grappled anymore, but he's prone. Okay. Well, anyway, 25 hits. Uh, so he takes uh, eight. eight bludgeoning damage but more importantly he is grappled again and until this grapple ends just, he is he is restrained and the tentacle can't do anything else but the creature is restrained just a heads up randy it rolled when you did the 25 and it did 13. so oh, oh okay 13 oh, bludgeoning yeah i probably want to take that damage okay the more important thing is he's restrained wow just stacking all these stats on him huh? <laughs> like stay put uh and then rolls against creatures have advantage and creatures attack rolls have disadvantage let's see disadvantage on dexterity saving throws good to know 
it's nice that he used up all of his uh, legendaries. Legendaries, yeah. Uh, you you got him to use them all. That was perfect. And uh, then I will uh, try to f flee the room for the about one, two, four, five, six. All right, so I'm gonna move over here. I'm going to attack. First attack on him. You have, you have points yet? Yeah. All of these are at advantage, right? 18. Whoa, it actually rolled uh, Halfling Lunk for me automatically. Oh, really? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah that, that's a new thing it does. That's cool. It, it The first, the, the advantage came out, and then I saw the one that it rolled the third one. I'm like, oh, sweet. Um, that's cool. And uh, with my last key point, I say stunning strike. Yeah. This is amazing. Oh my god. Fail. This is amazing. He's Fail, prone, yeah. restrained, and stunned. I'm gonna... Can I just yell out to him? Like, Diane, fuck you. <laughs> and my next plan was to do a shove action at Zolt, but since he's now stunned, he is, you're no longer grappled, so I'm just gonna attack. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's amazing. Uh, Diane. Or die again. Or oh, wait a minute. Oh, I don't have any more key points. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I can't. Never mind, I couldn't have done it anyway because of the attack action. Um, uh, so, second attack, I have to do that regardless. 26 to hit. And for then um, for seven. And then bonus action, another one. I wish I wish there was something that I could do that I. That'll make him take a dexterity or a, or a um, dex or something saving throw. And hit. 26 to hit. Damn. Or nine bludgeoning. And then I'll move. Uh, oh, no. He's totally stunned. He can't even can't yep. do anything. Yep. I'll, then, then I'll just stay there. That, uh, that sure does. Whoa, it just turned again. Yeah, stunned. <laughs> the skeleton will go ahead and make an attack at Caliban. That's a 16 to hit. Miss. The second skeleton will take a short bow attack against Zolt. Misses. All right, I can't see through there, so I'm not going to react to that. Moves away because he's not grappled anymore. And takes uh, two attacks at the archer in front of him. After casting Hunter's Hunter's Mark on it, and we'll attack twice. Uh, as he got up to the table, he looked back at Guy and he said, "Thank you." Sixteen and thirty, so that'll be twelve. Twenty-two plus six. The creature drops to the ground dead. And that's his turn. Let me hit the button. How tall is this this table? Dusk, whatever it is. Four feet. Four feet. How tall am I? You're less than four feet. Yes. Yeah, so you could have just been hiding under the table. You didn't need to be laying down. <laughs> but if so I'm funny. moving prone, is that regular five feet or is it like un... Yeah. Uh, is it a, what do you call it? Um, For every five foot you, you crawl, you have to spend an additional five feet. It, oh, so it's like, a, what is that called? Something terrain? Nope, it's yeah, not difficult. a difficult terrain. Uh, it's it's like not it. con for, for every five feet you crawl, you have to you have to spend another five feet. Oh, okay, because it's just crawling because it takes more effort, kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. It's a, yeah. So. If if the, the do remember that there's a difference between half half halving your speed and taking additional movement when you're crawling, kind of deal. That's I see. Why. There's a distinction. Okay, so I'm gonna um, stand up. That gives me ten, and I'm gonna c come with my last ten movement right here. And then I'm going to... Can I lightning bolt without hurting Guy? Right there? Sure. <laughs> that doesn't... <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do this at level 5. Automatically loot does not dex save, yep. so... That's take it. the damage. He's stunned. Oh, damn, oh, I forgot. Oh, so guys turn. Damage. Full fifth level damage. I'd be laughing if you roll all ones. All right. <laughs> oh. 
Why'd you put that on? Why did you do that? <laughs> so just a straight roll, right? I don't have to do advantage or anything. It's a saving throw. Yeah, you just hit the button. So man. you roll. Yeah, you have to roll your damage. Yeah. What do you do? That's nice. good, man. Look at all those fours. Oh, you're nice. Yeah. Is he electrocuted? What does he smell like? Damn. Yeah, that ends my turn. Okay. Oh, oh, we have oh, something oh, Dexy oh, there. Dexy? And... <laughs> I will cast Flame Strike right about there. Okay. So, so, that, so that it encompasses the vampire and the archer without frying guy. That's so Dexy. <laughs> and he is restrained currently, so stunned too. 46 fire and Ooh. and 46 radiant. Nice. Okay. 30, man. That's a lot. Hell yeah. Throw all these conditions at him. And then I'll move back around the corner. <laughs> Did that kill the other skeleton archer? Yes. Yes. Amazing. Oh, oh in that case, I don't have to. That's funny. <laughs> you just watch him crumble <laughs> on fire. You're like, oh, okay, I'm good. Well, in this case, we just gonna watch Diane. Wait, what is this and, thing that I'm seeing back and there? An, and an, an enormous tentacle will just continue to hold him. The day of the tentacle. What? What am I looking at? What is those? those are the, oh yeah, those are those things. That ends. No more key points. The only thing I could do was just pound him in the face. Punch him. Don't punch him up. For nine piercing. 26 to hit. Or 11 more piercing. I've never seen an enemy so. with so many different effects on them. And then, there, there, there uh, was once in, in the Tomb of Annihilation game where I forget what, what it was, but. This thing must have had six or seven different like things holding it, restraining it, cursing it, blinding it. And then a bonus action, my arm strike. Or 28 for another 10, so that's 30 damage total. As you strike out at Diane, one, two, three times, the third strike connecting to his chest, almost punching a hole through it, and the body disintegrates into mist. Oh, into mist. Um, yeah, oh, where's the mist going? What? Wait, what? <laughs> but, uh, but I want to know where the mist is going after afterwards. Is he misty stepping? You see the mist rise from the ground and move back through the purple mist in the doorway. Damn, you know who's not going to fit through that gate? Tentacle. <laughs> actually, <laughs> tentacle's actually, rooted to his spot anyway, so. Oh, okay. Because oh, actually, he, he can't actually move. Oh, but, but he does have a 35 foot reach, so you should have you should have done I, the snake snack. And I, uh, Kelvin, is the tentacle like physical or is it more magical? It's so physical. It is, it's it's physical. Like, can I have a piece of it later? I don't or, think that'll work, Eddie. I mean, once once the spell goes away, he just it goes away with it. Yeah, he evaporates back into you know ectoplasm or whatever he's made out of. So, uh, but but no, in in the way the rules are written, you as a you could squeeze into a smaller space we drop out of combat guy you're fast enough to follow it if you'd like to go through the purple mist well that's the problem i don't want to go through the mist okay <laughs> is fitty having another dispel magic oh. but there's Spell also it. but there's also another miss i we know that there's another there's double miss. Double, double miss stuff. he got away guys well i can dispel you I can have dispel, dispel too mist. yeah I don't want to metagame, but there's another creature on the turn tracker. So if we want to keep fighting, we can. Yeah, because I saw it, though. Oh, I couldn't see it because of the mist. That's right. I couldn't see it. We're going to see him again. That was intense, guys. And we will only if we stay only if we stay here. Let's just loot the place. Get what we came well, for. Get out well, hold on. Where's the diamond? We have to get it. We have to get it. We still yeah, got to search the place. We haven't. But, we had a rest. But well, we don't know. It wasn't in this room because it would have, it would have keyed on you, right? Like you would have, you would have felt it in this room if you knew it was in here. That's why we were detecting magic, I guess. Uh, I was detecting magic just because there was purple mist floating around. Right. Well, Fiddy was detecting magic. You still, you were still concentrating on the diamond. 
Well, up until let's, let's the combat see how many happened. Stuff. Yeah. Until up until the combat happened, though, I I don't know if any the, anything you cast required concentration. Yeah, I had to drop the the, the locate object. Oh, well, I can cast it again. Because that's the whole reason we came here. Otherwise, yeah. this was just. And I'm a waste. Cast, and I'm casting it again. You get a ping of the diamond's location through the mist to the west. Fetty, open the gate. Gate's open. The mist dissipates for about six seconds, allowing Guy and Zolt to run through. Wait, wait, wait for me! It only dissipates for six seconds? For one round. Gosh, if you want to do well, anything, you got to like do it your freaking self. I'm running out of spells here, but... Uh... No, 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 no. I f- <laughs> I, here's the thing. We noticed that during combat. I find it hard to believe that Caliban wouldn't have been ready to go through the gate with us, but... Well, even then, it's not like you can't dash, right? Because that's you, that's more that you can do that within sixty feet. Yeah, I guess that's up to Rick. Could he have seen the gate open, well, moved, and dashed in six seconds? Probably here. That's that's far. Because I didn't do the dispel while I was yeah. up front. I was back here still. And you did you do it while laying down too? Were you not standing? Well, it, dep- it, it well it would depend. Like, would it go back up at the when it uh, when it go back up at the end? The question is, would it go back up at the end of uh, his next turn? No, then he then on his next turn he should be able to go through then. Like, you know, why doesn't Fitty just stay where stay put? Oh, um... yeah, I'm gonna stay with the tentacle. Maybe it's safer. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna stay by my buddy, the tentacle. Yeah, he's kind of hurt anyway. Why don't you watch Torrin's yeah. dead body? Make sure no one grabs oh, it. Oh, where is Torrin? Well, no, the, ten- the tentacle's gone now because I had drop concentration on it too. Oh, so, so Fiddy can so just for the diamonds. Oh, my friend. Mm-hmm. Why don't you drink I don't some feel potions anymore? I'm gonna look at the books. Oh yeah, I'm gonna read the books. I'm sure Take that. Care. Take hey, care, guys. What's the over under on him being dead because the books blew up on him when we come back out? <laughs> okay, well, I'm. I, you're right. I'm. I'm in like really damaged. I don't have people around me. I'll be careful. I'll just look at the books. Do you have a potion you can drink? No. TikTok guys, ten minutes. <laughs> Dying. <Dynasty. laughs> no. TikTok. Okay. Caliban, which which way? Still west. And I guess I'm gonna have to uh, drop this one myself. As you cast dispel magic, and the purple mist dissipates, you spy a black skull painted on the tiles in front of you. Wisps of smoke rise from it. It's just painted on the ground, or is it moving? Whoa! <laughs> Did you everybody feel that earthquake? Kind of sh- shifted there for a second. Weird. I think I think that was an earthquake. In there, kind of doing their thing. Can I can I at least investigate the tables? Not touching anything. Just you know, see if there's any potions, maybe. Okay, cool. I go th- I go through, but I don't get near the uh, the smoke. Mm-hmm. That doesn't sound good. Do you think that controls the mists? Like, it's got to be some type of spell that keeps renewing itself, right? Like the rune, like the rune with the with the with the uh, ice trap. Yeah, you lost me on that one. There was there was a thing that was making it keep going, right? These gates keep coming up, even though we killed the vampire or whatever. So there's got to be something. Well, uh, we didn't empowering. really kill him. He he ran away. But oh, well, there's nothing for it. Um, I guess I'm just gonna have to like step across this line. I don't, I'm not seeing any other option here. You guys Good want luck. me to try first? Hmm? You guys want me to try first? I'm not sure it makes a difference, because we got to go Be- south here. Better decks? Is that why you're asking? No, not mechanically. I'm just asking, do you want me to try first? Sure, yeah, why not? Then I'll go here, and then I'll I'll jump across here. Yeah, he's got like 35 feet jump. Stay here. As you easily jump across, you feel tendrils of smoke reach out towards your legs. Caliban and Zolt, you actually see the tendrils reaching out. Guy, you take eight points of necrotic damage and your maximum hit points are reduced by eight. You make me do all my hit point thing. Ah, uh, lucky <laughs> the math is easy this time. My, my current is 44. My max is now at 70. All right, well, watch out, guy. I'm going to jump to... Are you sure? I mean, one person can search what we're looking for. Okay, yeah, you guys make a good point. I, I Yeah, I want to look around at this point, like, what's this? Is, what's this? And... Oh, that's clearly where he sleeps. Yeah, I'm guessing that's a grave. 
It appears to be freshly churned dirt covered with grass or sod that sits in this 20-foot area. On the tables sit alchemical supplies, books, and many of their necromantic accoutrements. What do you guys want what's, me to do? Because I what's attempted to dig up that grave and to go a little stage. Eventually, state. what's what's down here? Because I can't quite see around the corner. I'll go ahead and there's search. a there's a desk and a table. Zolt says because he can see around the corner. Yep. Like just keep looking, guy. It's there. I um I search for anything uh, useful. Give me an investigation or perception check as you search throughout the room. You spot a double layered desk with several shelves. On the uppermost shelf sits two different sized skulls, and in between them is a rough hewn jewel. Swipe! So I got it over here, guys. And then what I do want is it okay I dig this up? Works for me. All right, I start digging it up. Uh, if that's gonna take some time, anybody have anything wooden and pointy they could uh, maybe sharpen while I do this? I guess that's a no. <laughs> Looking through my stuff, I'm not seeing, uh... Well, I don't know if I could turn my flute into a stake or not, but... Or if somebody, like, has a torch that they could, like, really quick, like, sharpen ah! up while they're waiting. Yeah, that's okay. an even better idea. I have torches, yeah. Sure. So do I. I take out a dagger and I start sharpening a torch. Yeah. Well, you're playing with the grave. We're just sharpening stakes. <laughs> Man, we are this. We are so ridiculous. I love it. I have, like arrows too. Aren't those made out of wood? Yeah, they're not big enough though. These oh, are a uh, piece of wood. And they're already kind of, kind of pointy. Zolt had all this. Zolt has his bow ready in case anything else pops out. He, he can, he can help from back here. <laughs> 